This is Ecotricity's Ecotech a Roundup show from Aperoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Before we get going today, a thank you to the team at Ecotricity for winning an SBN Communicating Change Award this week. Great work, guys, and sorry I couldn't be there for the ceremony. I'm just a little bit far away to, to nip over, as you know. We have to start today's show with the official start of deliveries of the Tesla Semi following a low-key, just the facts ma'am event at Tesla's Gigafactory in Sparks, Reno, Nevada on Thursday night, local time. Standing on the bed of a trailer attached to a Tesla Semi, Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Dan Priestley, Tesla's senior manager for Tesla Semi Engineering, went over some of the important facts about the Tesla Semi, including the surprising fact that it shares its triple motor setup with the Tesla Model S Plaid and Model X Plaid. Under heavy acceleration, all three motors provide power, but when cruising, two of the motors are mechanically detached from the drivetrain. This helps the Tesla Semi might achieve a truly impressive two kilowatt hours per mile efficiency from one megawatt hour, 1000 volts of battery pack. It was honestly quite refreshing to see a much more focused and less hyped up event from Tesla and long may it continue. It was back in late 2019 when I got a chance to go and see the Ford Mustang Mark E first hand at the design studio in Germany where it was made. And a few weeks later, it did make its debut at the LA Auto Show. And now, as the Mustang Mark E enters into its third year of series production, Ford has passed the milestone of making its 115th Mark E. Ford says that it now has the Mark E on sale in 37 countries around the world, with plans to introduce it to several more next year, including Brazil, Argentina, and Aotearoa. To date, the lion's share of Mark E's have found themselves in the US with Ford reporting that the Mark E is the first electric model for 8 in 10 US customers and 9 in 10 European customers. By the end of next year, Ford says it hopes to accelerate its global Mark E production to 270,000 vehicles per year. It's the start of December and that means automakers are starting to share some of their sales figures for the month of November. And in those sales figures, there's some good news for both Hyundai and its sister brand Kia. Both marks reported increased year-on-year -year sales growth for November, helped on by a significant boost in quote-unquote electrified vehicle sales. While that term does include hybrids as well as battery electric, plug-in hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell, Ionic 5, Kona EV and EV6 all had a strong month. And just as we were finishing today's script, Ford pushed its November figures, showcasing dropping internal combustion engine sales but rising EV sales, with overall sales down 7.8%, but EV sales up 102.6%. This shows that while ICE vehicle sales are still slow, EV sales are accelerating, and we kind of like that. The latest batch of data pertaining to the US electrical grid energy mix was published this week by the Energy Information Administration. EIA for short. During the first three quarters of this year, renewables accounted for 22.6% of electricity generated in the US. That's up from 20.33% last year, making this year another record breaker for a cleaner electrical grid. Comparing the first nine months of this year to the first nine months of last, renewable energy sources of power, including rooftop solar, increased their output by 15.44%. Moreover, renewable energy sources outproduced coal power stations by 15.52% and nuclear power stations by 28.25%. It is great to see that the grid is getting cleaner and cleaner because that makes every electric vehicle on the road cleaner as well.
During Thursday evening's Tesla Semi event, we learned a whole lot about the Tesla Semi and its capabilities, as well as its 1000 volt battery pack and mega charger. What we also learned though was the fact that Tesla intends to use the Tesla mega charger for the Tesla Cybertruck too, with Elon Musk confirming during the event that like the Tesla Semi, Tesla intends the Cybertruck to have a 1000 volt battery pack and one megawatt quick charge capability. This is pretty big news for anyone with a Cybertruck reservation and it would make the Tesla Cybertruck the first Tesla for regular customers to be built with a new higher voltage system architecture. Higher voltage battery packs require a lower current flow for a given power output and that in turn should mean greater efficiency since less energy will be lost to heat caused by resistive losses in the power electronics. So this is exciting news indeed. In February next year, Mercedes-Benz will debut its next generation e-sprinter to the world and before that happens, the company has begun drip feeding information about it. This week, that took the form of a new video covering the 475 kilometer, 295 mile real world road trip undertaken by a pre-production version of that next generation e-sprinter on a single charge. According to Mercedes-Benz, the test run, which was confirmed by TUV SUD, a well-known independent test body, as achieving an energy efficiency of 21.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. For a large, not very aerodynamic vehicle that is incredibly impressive and suggests that when the next generation e-sprinter debuts, it may well be market leading for its segment. It is truly amazing to see how quickly the electric vehicle world has evolved in the last decade as battery pack energy density, power density and powertrain electronic improvements have all made EVs travel further and charge faster and BMW, which is busy designing its next generation of electric vehicles under the new class platform, says that its sixth generation EV battery packs will cost one half of current generation batteries while providing 30% more range. The news comes courtesy of Simon Erhard, one of the lead engineers on BMW's sixth generation battery tech. Talking to Automotive News this week, he confirmed that the new battery pack design, which sees BMW switch from pouch cell to cylindrical cells just like Tesla uses will also see BMW adopt structural battery pack and cell to pack designs. The first of these new class models will debut in 2025. Earlier this year, Aptera began something of a personal crusade to get the US auto industry and the US government to adopt Tesla's charging inlet as the US EV charging standard of choice, with a petition calling for the same. And while that petition hasn't affected change yet, and I doubt it will, the intervening time has seen Tesla make the design specifications of its charger inlet and its charge standard, which it's now calling the Tesla North American charging standard, publicly available for all to use. And thus, that's opened the door for Aptera to confirm that yes, its vehicles will make use of the Tesla Charge Inlet as its charging standard of choice. This means the Aptera Charge Inlet can be hidden behind its single license plate at the rear of the vehicle. Remember, it's an auto cycle, so it doesn't need a license plate at the front, and that will in turn ensure Aptera can keep its super sleek aerodynamic design with no need for charger inlet doors. The ongoing battle between Tesla, legislators and regulators over what's OK and what's not OK when it comes to semi-autonomous and autonomous vehicle operation is something we could frankly make weeks worth of videos. But the too long didn't read right now is that while Tesla does have its autopilot beta program in operation, Tesla isn't technically able to push full self-driving to all customers' cars as a fully fledged feature until regulators and legislators have caught up with autonomous vehicle regulation. So this week, Tesla did the thing that I've been waiting for it to do. It pushed Tesla full self-driving beta to all North American customers who have paid for full self-driving functionality in their cars without first requiring them to have high safety scores. Is it a way to get around the rules or is it a true expansion of beta testing? Let us know below. 
As Volkswagen's first car to be built on the MEB platform, the Volkswagen ID3 is quickly approaching its third year of production, and in the automotive world, that means it's soon going to be time for a mid cycle refresh. So it's no surprise then that this week Volkswagen began testing some subtle changes to the Volkswagen ID3 that will drop for the 2024 model year. Sadly, at this point, there's no video to share, only photos, but Volkswagen says the 2024 ID3, due to hit the roads next spring, will get a facelift at the front with more aggressive side air intakes, tweaked headlights and reshaped hood. Inside, though, we will be told there'll be a larger 12-inch touchscreen centre display, and teaser images look to include a head-up display for the first time. The facelifted ID3 is already available for order in Germany for spring delivery. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all of the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can sign up with, and of course, how to get clean green energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. This year, we've seen some truly impressive electric cars come out of Hyundai, Kia and Genesis, thanks to some incredibly well-designed work in the form of the eGMP platform. That's the platform that underpins all of the Hyundai, Kia, Genesis electric cars. This week, Hyundai showcased something new it's been working on, though, namely the electric vehicle technology it's been busy developing with its RN22e and Envision 74 prototypes. The RN22e, the first out-and-out high-performance vehicle built on the eGMP platform, is, we're told, the vehicle that was used to refine the final design and specifications of the upcoming Hyundai Ioniq 5N, which will be the first N-badged EV to go on sale sometime next year. We see said vehicle in camouflage form briefly in the video, but it is only a three second cameo, so you have to keep your eyes peeled and be ready for it. And finally, the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup has made some pretty big waves in the automotive industry this year, and it's helped Ford earn second place in the US EV sales charts. Earlier this week, though, a troubling story crossed our desk when we heard about an owner called Eric Rowe, who is, as it happens, a longtime EV owner, whose F-150 Lightning had a bad experience at an Electrify America charging station. Per Rowe, he plugged his Lightning into an EA station in Newport, Oregon, started charging, but then there was a bang and the charging station appeared to turn off. Rowe says his truck wouldn't start, requiring a tow truck to tow him out of the bay. I should note that nobody knows for sure if it was the truck or the charging station, but for the record, both Ford and Electrify America say they are escalating their investigations promptly to find out exactly what happened. I know the F-150 Lightning isn't available in Altaura. This does seem like an isolated incident. Nevertheless, it's still a little scary, so we'll keep you posted. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, do switch to Altaura's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you you will help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back with more awesome content very soon, as will the lovely Kiwi EV Shoebridge, aka Gav, and we'll be back here next weekend for our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you are doing. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.